All right, well, you guessed it. It's that time again, Christian Universalism series. This is Thomas Kissinger. This is going to be number seven in the series. And we have been going through Old Testament scriptures that uh, support this idea of the plan of God, that God has a plan to be all in all. As Paul spoke of in 1 Corinthians 15, 28, that God shall be all in all, everything to everyone. God actually planned it this way from the beginning. He is all loving, all powerful, and he never gives up. And he's carrying his plan out. It is going according to plan, just the way that he planned it. And God is in control. And God is doing this great thing in the earth that he is unfolding who he is and he is harvesting mankind, all mankind back to himself through the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we get into some of these scriptures, I thought we would hear from Gary Amaralt, the late great Gary Amaralt. I knew Gary Amaralt. Many of you out there who may end up listening to this, you knew Gary Amaralt. He was a tremendous advocate for the victorious gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, that Jesus is the Savior of all mankind. And um, I knew him uh, when he was living, and he has passed on to be with the Lord. And uh, he was a very special man. And it was very special also to have known him, to have met him, to have talked to him many times on the phone. And he was a great blessing. I came across his information years ago when I was first studying uh, the Greek word Ion and Ionios. I came across his website, tentmaker.org, and came across his article on Ion, and it changed me, made me free, helped me to see it, see the truth of the matter, uh, that punishment is of limited duration. It's Ion or Ionios of the ages or belonging to the ages of time and that it is for correction, and that set me off uh, to the races, set me off to discovering this great truth of universal salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. But this is a poem that Gary Amaralt wrote, and hey, look, it's got a little bit of sarcasm in it. Gary was kind of like that. He was blunt. He was to the point. He let you know what was on his mind, but it's also got a lot of facts in it, and it has revelation truth from God. So don't be offended by it and let it just, hey, break up the fallow ground. And the title of it is really a question, Just What the Hell is Hell? by Gary Amaral. There once was a time it was plain to see just what the hell hell was meant to be. But then theologians got into the act, and hell no longer was a simple fact. Hell, formerly, was a dark, hidden space, imperceivable, covered, a true hiding place. It could be a place as crude as a shed, or could be a helmet to cover your head. Smoochers and kissers oft needed a hell, for hidden in darkness no one could tell. Hall, hole, and hull come from the same root, along with a heel covered with a boot. Too simple, so theologians once said, and now from their scheming confusion has spread. They hired the Dantes and Michelangelos to paint pretty pictures of many great woes. Fire and torment with much superstition was added to pagan mythology and fiction. The goddess of hell from Norse mythology, became Satan, hero of most eschatology. Jesus the Savior delivered mankind. He came not for few, but for all men to find. His portion became a rather small lot, while most of mankind in hell fire would rot. The way to this hell became broad and wide. The gift of God's grace was at its low tide. Clothes, creeds, and days, the right denomination became the sole means, the way to salvation. Gehenna, Hades, Tartaruo, and Sheol all became places that could swallow your soul. Preachers now had us right where they wanted. Obey or to hell with you, they often taunted. 
Countless denominations of devilish preachers forsook the gift and became Satan's teachers. Thousands of ways of deliverance from hell in common they all have a self-righteous smell. Finished, he cried, I will draw all mankind the Father's desire, all saved in his mind. The task he was given, he accomplished it all. And as his witness, he commissioned St. Paul. Paul's gospel was different, it's easy to tell, because never once did he use the word hell. So hell is no more, it's becoming a bore, it's taking its place along with common folklore. Punish he will, for our Father is just. In age-long correction, you surely can trust. On vindictive torment, our Father's not bent. Mercy will, yes, triumph over judgment. What a beautiful piece of work that Gary Amaral put together there. Let that sink in and let God minister to you on that and let him give you revelation and make you free concerning the idea of hell. This idea of a never-ending hell, a literal hell of eternal torture, burning people in literal fire forever and ever, is not true. The Bible does not speak of that. The Bible correctly understood, correctly discerned, correctly translated, does not teach that. It does teach that God has wrath, torment, vengeance, destruction, judgment, punishment, fire, hell, and the lake of fire. But all of these things that I mentioned, when understood in their proper light, will be seen to be corrective in nature and of limited duration. And Jesus holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And Jesus is the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Let's go through some of these scriptures in a little bit of the time that we have left where we left off. Psalm 138.4. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. All the kings of the earth. God's got it in his hand. Psalm 139.7-8. through 8. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. God's everywhere. God's in heaven. God's in hell. God, God's going to bring everybody through. Everybody's going through and coming out the other side, eventually, ultimately, confessing the name of the Lord Jesus Christ being washed in his precious blood, bowing their knee to him, to the glory of God the Father. Psalm 145, 9 through 10, The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. Wow, God's good to all. His mercies are over all his works. All of his works are going to eventually praise him. Give him a little time. Let him finish. Psalm 145, 14, the Lord upholds all that fall and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. God's going to raise everybody up. Everybody that's bowed down, God's going to raise them up. Proverbs 16, 4 through 6, very interesting passage right here. The Lord hath made all things for himself, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So you can see something in that passage about the sovereignty of God. Yes, God is in control of good and evil, righteous and the wicked. And he even made the wicked for the day of evil, and they shall be punished. But you've got to understand that the punishment is for the purpose of correction. God's going to administer mercy and truth, and he's going to purge the iniquity away from all of us. That's the blessing that he promised through Abraham, that through him and his seed, all the families of the earth would be blessed, that their iniquity would be removed because of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Isaiah 2.2. 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. All nations. God is interested in all nations, all people, all kings, all the earth, everything, everyone. Get that down in your spirit. Isaiah 11, 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hallelujah. Is that fully manifested right now? No. It is in process and on its way. And God has a plan and he is bringing it to pass. First with a remnant or first fruits, those that have the ears to hear. Then it will be the church in general and then it will be the unbelievers. These are the three great harvests. Let's read one more passage here and we'll stop. Isaiah 25, 7 through 8. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces and re the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth for the Lord hath spoken it. God is going to remove the covering that's cast over all people. He's going to swallow up death and victory. He's going to wipe away tears from all faces. That's who our God is. Hallelujah. Savior of all men.